Good morning, chemistry students. Today I am going over ChemQuest 36, More Chemical Reactions. And um, I'm going to try to remember as we go that we also need to balance every equation on this ChemQuest. So um, it starts with information about double replacement reactions. In the previous ChemQuest, you learned about single replacement reactions in which a single atom replaces an, ad an ion from another reactant. Study what happens in the following reactions. They are called double replacement reactions. So we're going to balance these double replacement reactions. So we have one magnesium here. We have one magnesium here. We have two chlorines here and we have one chlorine here, so we need a coefficient of two. We have one sodium here. We have two sodiums here, so we need a coefficient of two in front of sodium fluoride. We have two fluorines here. We have two fluorines here, so this is balanced. And again, to kind of notice what's happening here, or if we check first, one magnesium, one magnesium, two chlorines, two chlorines, two sodiums, two sodiums, two fluorines, two fluorines. If we kind of notice what's happening here, right, magnesium and sodium swap partners in this reaction, correct? So our product, sodium's partner, is now chlorine, and magnesium's partner is now fluorine. So our one that's here on, written here, balancing it, we have two aluminums and two aluminums, three sulfurs and one sulfur, so we need a coefficient of three in front of sodium sulfide. We have two sodiums and we have six sodiums here now, so we need a coefficient of three in front of sodium oxide. We have three oxygens and we have three oxygen. This looks like it's balanced. We'll check. Two aluminums, two aluminums, three sulfurs, three sulfurs, six sodiums, two times three, six sodiums, and three oxygens, three oxygens that is properly balanced. And again, what we see happening there in terms of this reaction is we see aluminum and sodium swapping partners so that aluminum's new partner is oxygen and sodium's new partner is sulfur. So our last one here, balancing it, we have one calcium and we have three calcium, so we need a coefficient of three in front of calcium nitrate. We have two nitrates and we have one nitrate, so we need a coefficient of two in front of sodium nitrate. We have three sodiums and we have two sodiums. So we're gonna have to change this coefficient here to make it a six so that we can have six sodiums here, okay? And that's true because we had two times three, which is six nitrates. So we should have caught that to begin with. All right, so we're looking at phosphorus now. We have two phosphoruses and we have two phosphorus. I think it's balanced, we're gonna check it. Three calciums three calciums, three times two is six nit nitrates, six nitrates, three times two is six sodiums, six sodiums, two phosphorus, two phosphorus, it's balanced. Again, if we look at what's happening in this reaction, we see that calcium and sodium, our metals, have swap partners again, so that calcium's partner is now phosphorus and sodium's partner is now nitrate. 
So question number one, what is the difference between single replacement reactions and double replacement reactions? Okay, so in single replacement reactions, one of the reactants is made of only one kind of atom. So what we're talking about there is that idea that in all single replacement reactions, our reactants are an element and a compound, okay? In double replacement reactions, Both reactants contain more than one kind of atom. So what we're getting at here is, again, we said in a single replacement, we had an element plus a compound as our reactants. In a double replacement reaction, if you look at all of these, we have two compounds as our reactants. And we also have two compounds as our products. Up here, remember, our products are always an element and a compound. It's a different element and a different compound. And same thing here, it's two compounds, but it's different compounds. Question number two, complete the following reactions by providing the formulas for the missing compounds. We're also gonna balance them. So again, if we take a look at this one, okay, we see sodium here and copper, and they must have swapped partners. Okay, so I have copper over here. I'm missing my sodium, and it's going to be an ionic compound because sodium's a metal. Okay, and I am missing my chlorine. So Cl, charge of negative 1, so that's written correctly. So now, when it comes time to balance this, I have one copper, I have one copper, so that looks okay. I have two nitrates, and I have one nitrate, so I need a coefficient of two in front of sodium nitrate. I have one sodium, I have two sodium, so I need a coefficient of two in front of sodium chloride. I have two chlorines, and I have two chlorines, so I think it's balanced checking. One copper, one copper, two nitrates, two nitrates, two sodiums, two sodiums, two chlorines, two chlorines. All right. Continuing number two, complete the following reactions by providing the formulas for the missing compounds. We'll also balance them. So again, the elements that I'm missing here, I'm missing the element aluminum, and I'm missing the sulfate. So my other reactant is going to be aluminum sulfate, which is an ionic compound. So aluminum is Al, charge of plus three. Sulfate is SO4 charge of negative 2. So I need to crisscross down. I'm going to need parentheses and a 3. So now I'm ready to balance. So I have one zinc and one zinc. 
two iodines and I have three iodines so I need a coefficient of three in front of zinc iodide and a coefficient of two in front of aluminum iodide so now I have six iodines and six iodines um, but that has changed my zinc because I now have three of them, so I need a coefficient of three in front of zinc sulfate. I have two aluminums. I have two aluminums. I have three sulfates. I have three sulfates. I think it's balanced. I'm going to check. Three zinc. Three zinc. Six iodine. Two times three, six iodine. Two aluminum. Two aluminum three sulfates, three sulfates. All right, again, here they didn't give us either of the products, but again, we know that we're gonna have partner swapping going on, and so this potassium and magnesium are gonna swap partners. So these are both gonna be ionic compounds because they have metals in them. So one of our products is potassium with a plus charge and its partner now is going to be bromine with a negative one charge and my other one is going to be magnesium and it doesn't matter what order you put them in the two plus charge and oxide with a negative two so for both of these compounds i'd crisscross down and reduce the lowest whole number ratio so now I'm ready to balance. I have two potassium and I have one potassium, so I need a coefficient of two. I have one oxygen, I have one oxygen. I have one magnesium, I have one magnesium. I have two bromines, I have two bromines. It looks like it's balanced, I'll check. Two potassium, two potassium, one oxygen, one oxygen, one magnesium, one magnesium, two bromines, two bromines, it is balanced. Continuing number two, where we're supposed to complete the following reactions by providing the formulas for the missing compounds. Again, this one here, this is a double replacement reaction, so we know that barium and sodium have swapped partners. So again, the order that I write these reactants in doesn't matter, but barium is going to have a charge of plus two, and its partner as a reactant is going to have been chlorine with a charge of negative one because it's an ionic compound, so it's BaCl2. Sodium, charge of plus one because these are ionic compounds because they contain metal, and it's partner to start was sulfate with a charge of negative two so it needs to be Na2SO4. So now balancing this one barium, one barium, two chlorines, one chlorine so I need a coefficient of two in front of sodium chloride, two sodiums, two sodiums, one sulfate, one sulfate, think it's balanced. One barium, one barium, two chlorines, two chlorines, two sodium, two sodium, one sulfate, one sulfate. It is balanced. This second one again, this one's a little bit different because we have this polyatomic ion here instead of just a metal, but it's still positively charged and so I know it's going to swap partners with calcium. So my products are going to be ammonium with a charge of plus one, and its new partner is going to be iodine with a charge of negative one, so nothing to do to write that compound. Calcium is going to be my other metal, and its partner is going to be carbonate, which is CO3 negative two, so nothing to do to um, balance that either because I crisscross down those twos and then reduce. Now to balance it, I have two ammoniums and I have one ammonium, so I need a coefficient of two. I have one carbonate, I have one carbonate. I have one calcium, I have one calcium, I have two iodines, I have two iodines. I think it's balanced, I'll check again. Two so ammonium, two ammonium, 
one carbonate, one carbonate, one calcium, one calcium, two iodines, two iodines. It is correct, po properly balanced. Question number three, name the two products in the reaction between calcium phosphate and sodium iodide. Again, I know that this is a double replacement reaction because I have two compounds reacting, which means my metals, again, are going to swap partners. So um, my word equation for this is going to be calcium. phosphate plus sodium iodide produce and calcium's partner now is going to be iodide And sodium's partner will be phosphate. Now, I want you to write and balance the chemical equation for this as well, because I asked you to do that for all of them. So again, our next thing is to write a skeleton equation. These are all ionic compounds, so every single time I'm going to do symbols, charges, crisscross, lowest whole number ratio. So calcium is Ca, charge of plus 2. Phosphate you have memorized is PO4, charge of negative 3, I need to crisscross down, I'm going to need parentheses. Sodium is Na, charge of plus 1, iodide I, negative 1, nothing to do to that. Calcium is Ca, again its charge hasn't changed from the other side, so CaI2. Sodium is Na plus PO4, negative 3, so it's Na3PO4. So now I'm ready to balance it. I have 3 calcium and I have 1 calcium, so I need a coefficient of 3 in front of calcium iodide. I have two phosphates and I have one phosphate, so I need a coefficient of two in front of sodium phosphate. I have one sodium, I have two times three, which is six sodium, so I need a coefficient of six in front of sodium iodide. I have six iodide, I have three times two, which makes six iodide. I think I'm balanced, I'm checking. Three calcium, three calcium. 2 phosphate, 2 phosphate, 6 sodium, 2 times 3 makes 6 sodium, 6 iodine, 3 times 2 makes 6 iodide. This is properly balanced. Question number 4. Um, it asks you to explain why when you mix the following reactants, no reaction occurs. So if we look at this again, this is a double replacement reaction. We know it's double replacement because I have two compounds reacting. And notice that my metals are both sodium and they would swap partners. Well, when they swap partners, do they actually produce anything different? No. So the reason for this is that both reactants contain sodium. Okay, which means, therefore, if the sodium atoms replaced each other, the same products would be formed, no change would occur. Information, combustion reactions. Another type of reaction is a combustion reaction. During combustion, a hydrocarbon reacts with oxygen. The products for complete combustion are always the same, water and carbon dioxide and energy. The following equation is an example of, a, of the combustion of a hydrocarbon. So again, this one here, we're going to balance this. So we have three carbons and we have one carbon. So we need a coefficient of 3 in front of carbon dioxide. 
we have eight hydrogens and we have two hydrogens, so we need a coefficient of four in front of water. Now we know we have two oxygens here. We have three times two, so that's six, plus four makes ten oxygens altogether. So I need a coefficient of five in front of oxygen to balance this. Question five, complete the following reactions by supplying the missing compound in each blank. Okay, so at, for anything to burn, the other reactant that we always need, okay, is oxygen. So here we need O2. Now to balance this one, I have four carbon and I have one carbon, so I need a coefficient of four. I have eight hydrogen and I have two hydrogen, so I need a coefficient of four. So I have four times two, which makes eight oxygen here, and then four more here. So that makes 12 oxygen altogether. So to get 12 oxygen, I need a coefficient of six. I think it's balanced, I'm gonna check it. Four carbon, four carbon, eight hydrogen, four times two, that's eight hydrogen. 12 oxygen, I have eight plus four makes 12 oxygen. So, Moving on to our second example, we have the combustion of this hydrocarbon with oxygen, and again, the products of all um, combustion reactions are CO2 and H2O, and again, it doesn't really matter what order you write them in. Balancing this then, I have six carbons and I have one, so I need a coefficient of six in front of carbon dioxide. I have 14 hydrogens and I have two here, so I need a coefficient of seven. So if I look at my oxygens then, I have six times two, which is 12, plus seven, which gives me 19. Now, this happens quite often in combustion reactions. And so sometimes it can be kind of hard to come up with, well, what coefficient? The easiest way to do that, because I can't make a two become an even number, is to make my coefficient here be 19 over two. Now I can't have a two a fraction as my coefficient. So what that means is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna change all the coefficients I have and double them. I'm gonna multiply everything through by two. So the one I have in front of C6H14 becomes a two. The 19 over two is going to become just now, because I've multiplied by two, 19. The six is gonna become 12. And the seven is going to become 14. Okay, so now if I take a look, okay, and check and see if it's balanced correctly. I have two times six, which makes 12 hydrogen. I have 12 hydrogen. I have two times 14, which is 28 hydrogens. I have 14 times two, which is 28 hydrogens. Here, 12 times two is 24 plus 14 gives me 38 oxygen. 19 times two gives me 38 oxygen, so this is properly balanced. So that's a little trick when you're trying to balance combustion reactions and you need an odd number. You can take that odd number you need and put it over two and then multiply all your coefficients through by two. Question number six, write a combustion reaction for C5H10. So again, we start with our C5H10. For any combustion reaction, we have to have um, oxygen, so we need O2. Our products are always carbon dioxide 
add water. Again, we're going to balance this. 5 carbon, 1 carbon, coefficient of 5. 10 oxygen, 2 oxygen, so I need a coefficient of 5. So now I have 5 times 2 is 10, plus 5 is 15. Again, that's that odd number, so I'm going to do 15 over 2. Okay, I'm going to then check and see, because now I'm going to have to come through a little bit and change my coefficients to multiply everything by 2. So I get a 2 in front of the C5H10. My 15 over 2 is just going to become 15. My 5 is going to become 10. And my 5 is going to become 10. I'm going to check this now. 5 times 2 is 10 carbons, 10 carbons, 2 times 10 is 20 hydrogens, 2 times 10 is 20 hydrogens, the trash man must be here, my dog is barking, 15 times 2 is 30 oxygen altogether, I have 20 oxygen here, I have 10 more oxygen here, so I have 30 oxygen, so this is properly balanced. So information synthesis and decomposition reactions. Two other types of reactions are synthesis and decomposition. During a synthesis reaction, several reactants combine to make a single product. During a decomposition, one reactant decomposes into two or more products. The following table shows some examples of these types of reactions. Remember in your textbook when we talked about these, instead of calling it synthesis, we called it a combination. So again, we're going to kind of quickly work through the balancing of these. So I have two hydrogens, two hydrogen, that looks okay. But for the oxygen, I need a coefficient of two, which means I need a coefficient of two. And so now it's balanced. And when it decomposes, it's still the same element, so it's still going to require the same coefficients okay, to balance it. Um, sodium and chlorine, I need a 2 in front of sodium chloride to balance the chlorine, which means now I need a coefficient of 2 in front of sodium. And again, same deal. When it decomposes, it's still going to require the same coefficients to balance it. Question number 7. Every synthesis or combination reaction has one product, and every decomposition reaction has one reactant. Question number eight, write a synthesis reaction for sodium metal reacting with chlorine gas to form sodium chloride. Remember that chlorine is diatomic. Okay, so again, we want to start with a word equation. So write a synthesis reaction for sodium is one of our reactants reacting with chlorine. And again, I don't necessarily need the gas part, that's extra information, to form sodium chloride. So that's my word equation. Now I need to make it a skeleton equation. Symbols, symbol for sodium is Na. Chlorine, again, they reminded us already that as part of Dr. Brinkelhoff, it has to be Cl2. Sodium chloride is an ionic compound, so I'm going to do my symbols and charges and crisscross and make sure it's the lowest whole number ratio. Then I'm going to balance this. And again, one sodium, one sodium, two chlorines, one chlorine, so I need a coefficient of two and I need a coefficient of two. Okay, and so that is our balanced chemical equation. Number nine, categorize each of the following reactions as single replacement, double replacement, synthesis, decomposition, or combustion. So we're just going to do that category part first. Here again, I have a single product, which means that this has to be a synthesis or combination reaction. Here I have a hydrocarbon, so this is a combustion reaction. Here I have an element reacting with a compound producing an element and a compound, so that's a single replacement reaction. 
Here I have, again, an element reacting with a compound, producing an element and a compound. So that's a single replacement reaction. Here I have a single reactant, so that is a decomposition reaction. And in this last one, I have two compounds producing two compounds, so this is a double replacement reaction. Again, we're going to balance all of these as well. Here are our first ones. So I have one calcium, one calcium, two oxygen, so I need a coefficient of two in front of calcium oxide, which also means I need a coefficient of two in front of calcium. <coughs> um, this next one, again, I have four carbon, so I need a coefficient of four in front of carbon dioxide. I have 10 hydrogen, so I need a coefficient of 5, which means I have 8 plus 5, so that's that 13, so I'm going to do the 13 over 2, and then come through and change all my coefficients by multiplying them by 2, so I need a coefficient of 2, 13 over 2 is going to become 13, 4 is going to become... 8 and 5 is going to become 10. Checking 4 times 2 is 8, 8 carbons. 2 times 10 is 20, 2 times 10 is 20 hydrogens. I have 26 oxygens, I have 16 here, plus 10 more makes 26. All right, our next reaction, um, one strontium, one strontium, two chlorines, two chlorines, two fluorines, two fluorines. This is a skeleton equation that's also a balanced equation. Balancing these other ones, um, again, I have one magnesium, one magnesium, so that looks fine. Two nitrates and one nitrate, so I need a coefficient of two in front of copper nitrate. I have one copper, I have two coppers, so I need a coefficient of two in front of copper, and that is properly balanced. I have in letter D, I need a coefficient of two in front of aluminum, and I have three oxygens and two oxygens, so the easiest number to make them both is six, which means I need to change my coefficient on aluminum and make it a four and now that is properly balanced. Our double replacement reaction, one barium, one barium, two fluorines and one fluorine, so I need a coefficient of two in front of sodium fluoride, two sodiums, two sodiums, one oxygen, one oxygen, so that is now properly balanced. Number 10, write an equation for the combustion of C3H6. So again, C3H6 is one of my reactants. Every combustion reaction also requires oxygen, so I need O2. And the products of all combustion reactions are carbon dioxide and water. When I go about balancing this, three carbon, so I need a coefficient of three. Six hydrogens, so I need a coefficient of three. So I have 6 plus 3 makes 9. So I'm going to do that little 9 over 2 trick to make it a little bit quicker. And I'm going to change my coefficients now. So this is going to become a coefficient of 2. 9 over 2 is going to become 9. My 3 is going to become a 6. And... My 3 is going to become a 6. I think I'm balanced. I'll check. 3 times 2 is 6 carbon, 6 carbons. 2 times 6 is 12 hydrogens. 2 times 6 is 12 hydrogens. I have 18 oxygen here. I have 12 oxygen here, plus 6 more makes 18. This is properly balanced. Number 11, write an equation for the decomposition of calcium oxide, right? So my reactant is calcium oxide. 
the only thing that you can know that this is going to decompose into are its elements. So if you're asked to predict something like this, it'll always decompose into its elements, which are calcium and oxygen. There's my word equation. Now I'm ready to make it a skeleton equation. Calcium oxide is an ionic compound. So my symbols, charges, crisscross, lowest whole number ratio. Calcium is Ca. Oxygen, I have to remember, is diatomic, so it's O2. Balancing this, I need a coefficient of 2 in front of calcium oxide for the oxygen, and then a coefficient of 2 in front of calcium to properly balance it. Into the practice problems, number one asks you to complete the following reactions. Okay, so this reaction I know is a double replacement reaction because I see two compounds reacting. So sodium is a metal and aluminum's the other metal, so they're going to swap partners. So aluminum's partner, it's an ionic compound, is going to be carbonate. So two, and I need parentheses, three, plus my other product is sodium, and its partner is going to be nitride. And then to balance this, I have two sodiums and three sodiums, so I'm going to make them six with a coefficient of three and a coefficient of two. I have three carbonates, I have three carbonates. I have one aluminum, I have two aluminum, so I need a coefficient of two. And I have two nitrogens, and I have two nitrogens, so it is properly balanced now. Letter B, again, this is a single replacement reaction because I have an element reacting with a compound. Now this one I have to be careful about. This element here is a non-metal. So it's going to take the place of the non-metal. Remember for single replacement I need to check my activity series, but fluorine is higher than chlorine, so this reaction can take place. So now it's chlorine who's going to be by themselves as an element. And barium's partner, and barium's a metal, so this is an ionic compound, okay, is fluorine. Okay, so it needs to be BAF2. To balance this, this is a skeleton equation that's a balanced equation. All right, our last reaction again. I have a element reacting with a compound. This time, Silver's a metal, so it's going to take copper's place, okay? Now, silver's um, in a short column, but it's on your helper sheet. It only has one possible charge. It's plus one. Its partner is nitrate with a charge of negative one, and my other product is copper. And again, this is a skeleton equation that's also a balanced equation. Number two, fill in the blanks for the missing reactant or product, and then in the blank to the left of each equation, indicate whether the reaction is a single replacement, double replacement, synthesis, decomposition, or combustion. We're going to look at that first. We should be able to identify it as a type without putting things in the blanks. So um, this first one, notice I have two compounds as my product. And there's only one kind of reaction where I can have two compounds as my product. And that type of reaction is a double replacement. Okay. And notice here the parts that I'm missing, right? I'm missing zinc and nitrate. So when we balance these on the next slide, we'll look at that. All right, the next one I have an element and a compound as my product, which means this has to be a single replacement, right? And the element that I'm missing here is sodium. My last one here, 
I only am producing one product and there's only one kind of reaction that produces one product and that is our synthesis or combination reaction. So looking at these first two, again, remember we said this was a double replacement and so we know that zinc and lithium have to have swapped partners. So what we see missing here is we're missing our zinc which is on our helper sheet is only having one possible charge, which is plus two. And we're missing our nitrate, which is negative one. So I need parentheses and a two. And now I'm ready to balance this. One lithium, one lithium, one chlorine, two chlorine. So I need a coefficient of two, which means I'm gonna need a coefficient of two in front of my lithium as well. I have one zinc, one zinc, two nitrates, two nitrates, that is properly balanced. The second one, again, remember we said this was a single replacement because we had an element and a compound. So the element that I'm missing over here is sodium. Balancing this, sodium is good. Okay. But I have two bromides here, so I'm going to need a coefficient of 2 in front of sodium bromide, which means I need a coefficient of 2 in front of sodium, which makes that properly balanced. This last one, we said this was a synthesis or combination reaction. Potassium is a metal. It has a charge of plus 1. Chlorine is a nonmetal, charge of negative 1. Nothing to do to write that correctly, but balancing this... I need a coefficient of 2 in front of potassium chloride, which means I need a coefficient of 2 in front of potassium. So that brings us to the end of this ChemQuest. Have a great day.